Now, Autolite and its 60,000 dealers and service stations present... Suspense! Tonight, Autolite brings you John Lund in Lunch Kit, a suspense play produced and directed by Anton M. Leder. Friends, now that the weather's getting hot... You're getting thirsty. Everybody's getting thirsty. But not those dandy, dynamic, dependable Autolite Stay-Full batteries. No, sir, an Autolite Stay-Full battery needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Yes, only three times a year in normal car use. And it's got extra plates for extra power, protected by fiberglass insulation for stronger life and longer life. Why, in recent tests conducted according to SAE life cycle standards... Autolite stay-full batteries gave 70% longer average life than batteries without the stay-full features. So remember, you're right with Autolite. Oh, and also remember, the Autolite suspense show is now on television in many parts of the country every Tuesday night. And now, Autolite presents John Lund in a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. stop it. Father was getting angry, and Gus, he was so sensitive, especially at a time like this. I'll tell him to stop honking that horn, Dad. Please do, Jonathan. Yes, please, please do. I'll call down to him. I'll tell him to stop. Hey, hey, Mike, Mike. So there you are, Jonathan. Cut out that horn. Didn't I tell you this guy was sick? But we're going to be late for work. I'll be down in a few minutes. Take it easy. You better hurry up. I wouldn't want to be late, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't want to be late, Jonathan. Who is this, Mike? Did he cause any trouble? Oh, no, Father. He, he won't cause any trouble. Well, you've got to be careful, son. He wouldn't understand. There aren't many who would understand. You've got to be careful. I only did as you said, Dad. I made friends with one of the old timers down at the plant. I drive him to work every night. He works in the same unit with me. No, I can't get rid of him. You sure about him, kid? Sure, sure, I'm sure about him. Well, what does he think you're doing up here? Well, I told him a friend of mine lives here. Sick friend. It's all right, Dad. Very well. How's it coming, Gus? Almost finished. Gus was the mechanic. An old timer. My father had real respect for his ability. Gus had chipped out the inside of the thermos bottle. Now he was working on the detonator. Looked like the old-fashioned pocket watch my dad wore. Now Gus started winding it. Somehow, that kind of got me. I wish my father had never started this thing. I wish he didn't believe the way he did about atomic fission destroying the world. I wish he was like everybody else, that I wasn't his son. Hey, Jonathan, I... what time you got? Huh? What time do you have? What's the matter with you? Are you getting too nervous for me, son? Nervous? Oh, don't worry about me being nervous. It's, uh, uh, 829. 829. Okay, kid. <laughs> what are you sweating about? Who, me? Your dad ain't sweating. <laughs> this is no time to be nervous, Jonathan. She'll go off at 630 tomorrow morning. Is that okay? Fine, Gus, fine. Okay, kid? Sure. Okay. Now Gus cleared a little space on the table and went to a steel cupboard. came back with a metal jug cradled in his arm. My father leaned forward. I felt myself tightening up inside. Without thinking about it, I pulled a pack of cigarettes out of my jacket, put one in my mouth. Then as I was about to strike the match, Gus looked up. My father started coming toward me, the veins throbbing in his neck. Put that match away, you fool! What's what? wrong with you? Haven't you any sense at all? What, what, what do you mean? You tell him, Gus. A kid, if one spark gets into this nitro, they won't find enough of us here to fill that matchbox. Oh, the unlit cigarette turned to garbage in my mouth. I spit it out and stamped it to pieces on the cement floor. <sighs> my father and Gus looked at each other. Gus grinned. My father's face, stone hard, didn't change. And he looked at me 
Like I was still a little boy. Okay. Okay. They'd find out. When the night time came at the plant, it will be up to me. Your lunch, kid. Here it is. I just bought it this afternoon. Oh, look how pretty it is. It's a shame to spoil it. All right, finish with it, Gus. This is not a time for jokes. Funny about Gus and his jokes. He didn't believe in this thing at all. He'd sell out to anybody. Money. Just give him money. But you had to admire what he could do. He opened the lunch kit and took the bottle out. He screwed the detonator into the cap. And when it fitted right, he laid it aside. Then he put a siphon into the thermos bottle and opened a jug of nitroglycerin. He poured out a thick, yellowish liquid. And when the thermos bottle was full, he put the top on the jug and carried it back to the cupboard. You better be far away when this goes off, kid. I'll be far away, all right. Jonathan is a bright boy, Gus. I've taught him well. Gus didn't say anything after that. He bent down over his table and his eyes tightened up till you could barely see him. He worked quick. You could see he knew what he was doing. And watching him, I began to feel better. Then he was finished. He put the thermos bottle of nitro back inside the lunch kit and the sandwich and the orange. Then he closed the lunch kit and handed it to me. Here you are, kid. Don't drop it. I won't. <laughs> now, son... Yes, Dad. Look at me. Dad, look back at me. Yes. It will all work out all right, won't it, son? Yes, Dad. It'll be all right. You will make no mistakes. I'll be careful. And you'll be here tomorrow morning? I'll be here. Good. And then perhaps we'll go away together, you and I. That'll be fine. Oh, there's your friend again. All right, Jonathan, get on with it. Before the old fool gets us on into trouble. Yes. It's about time. What kept you? We got to talking. He's pretty sick. We're going to be late for work. Well, you should have taken a bus. What about you? I'd have been late. So what? So what? That ain't no attitude. All Jonathan. right, all right. Here. Open up the dashboard compartment. I want to put this lunch kit in. Okay. Be careful. Oh, it's a nice new one. <laughs> to the plant was something I'd never forget. What if I ran into something? A tire blew. A speck of dust got into my eye and I ran off the road. I stayed off the main highway. Too much traffic. This ain't the right road, Jonathan. I drove under 25 miles an hour all the way. Can't you go any faster? We're going to be late, Jonathan. And all the time, the old man kept talking, talking. You young fellas of today, you're a strange, disturbing lot. Talk, talk, talk. You've a fever in your blood. You're restless, and you don't know why. You're a strange lot. Yeah, 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 a strange lot. You've a fever in your blood. You, Keep you're... quiet. What's that? What? The noise. That rattling. Well, I don't know, Jonathan. Sounds like your lunch kit. Let uh, me at it. What are you worrying about that for? We're going to be late. Stop telling me we're going to be late. Stop that jabbering. Yes, Jonathan. You, you think the lunch kit will be all right now? Well, you packed it in pretty well. Okay. If you hear it rattling again, let me know right away. You hear, Mike? <laughs> night shift guys were already at work. The parking lot was jammed with their cars. We were late, but I was glad of that. Now I'd be able to park near the entrance. Later on, I'd be able to get out in a hurry. Okay, Mike, this is it. I'm, I'm sorry I made you late. Oh, that's all right, Jonathan. Uh, mind if I go back with you in the morning? Okay, just be here prompt. I won't wait for you. started for the main gate. The guard was standing there, inspecting everybody with, with a flashlight. I grinned at him and snapped the lunch kit open. How are you tonight? Okay. Not eating much, are you? No. Not much. Ought to. 
Put some weight on you. <laughs> Pass. I changed my clothes quickly and left the lunch kit in my locker. I figured I must look pretty haggard. So before going into the plant, I went to the washroom and washed my face and let cold water run down my wrists. And I saw I left my wristwatch in my street clothes. It was against the rules to go back into the locker room until the shift was over. Now, all night long, I wouldn't know what time it was. I'd have to ask, have to guess. Oh, Father wouldn't like that at all. I'm so careless. I began noticing kind of an ache in the pit of my stomach. Oh, I mustn't get sick tonight. I drank a lot of water, and the pain left me. Then I went back into my unit. Oh, this was going to be a bad night. I was all raw nerves. It was like being in the middle of a nightmare. A nightmare that wouldn't end. My hands were all thumbs. I couldn't seem to make them do anything right. Oh, Father wouldn't like the way I was doing things. I couldn't stand it much longer. Hey, Jonathan! Huh? What are you doing? Cut your switch. What? What's wrong, Mr. Davis? What's wrong? Is that the way you handle that modifier? Where's your apron? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, gee, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Davis. Don't be sorry. Do it right. Get on the ball, Jonathan. Get on the ball. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On the ball. What time was it getting to be? I couldn't concentrate. I, I couldn't think. All I could remember was what was in my locker. All I could remember was that thermos bottle filled at the top with nitro. All I could remember was a detonator set for 6.30. Hey, Mike, what time is it? 12.30. Hey, Mike, what time is it? Ten minutes after one. Hey, Mike, what time is it? Five minutes to two. Hey, Mike, what time is it? Almost time for lunch. Lunch? And am I hungry? I could eat them. Hey, what's wrong with you? Well, you're white as a... My stomach. My stomach. Hey, you guys, come over here, quick. How do you feel now, Sam? Uh, better. What, what time is it? Where am I? In the plant dispensary. You, uh, you ever had a spell like that before? No, no, I never did, Doc. What time is it? Say, you're pretty nervous, aren't you? No, 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 I'm all right. I don't know. Your pulse was extremely high when they brought you in here. But I'm all right now, Doc. I want to go back to my job. You want to what? <laughs> I can't allow you to go back to your job, son. Now, just relax. But I'm all right now. What, what time Take is it? Take it easy now. Take it easy. It's, uh, it's 2.30. 2.30? Well, then they all gone back to work. I won't be able to go to my locker. Oh, I, won't... I know what you're thinking. Your lunch, isn't that what's on your mind? But lunch is over. I won't be able to go well, back. Now, to... never mind. I'll send somebody to get your lunch, kid. Oh, no. No, don't do that. Huh? No, no. No, really, doctor. I'm not hungry. Oh, sure, I know, but you've got to have something. Uh, just sit there. He went into the next room. I wanted to jump up and start running. Oh, but that was no good either. Why, I made such a fuss about the lunch, kid. What's he doing in there? And he came back. And he was carrying a glass of milk. Here you are. If you're going to miss lunch, at least drink this. <laughs> milk. Go on. Drink it down. Okay. We'll finish it all. That's it. Yeah. Feel better? Yeah. I think... I think I better go back to work. No, you don't want to do that. Just take it easy. Oh, I feel fine now. Really. <laughs> You couldn't go back to work even if I let you. What do you mean? You'll lie down on the cot there in the next room and take it easy. You're going to take a nice long sleep. Sleep? Why, sure. Oh, no, no. i got to get back to work. Oh, no. Not tonight anymore. But I couldn't sleep. You'll sleep all right. I put a couple of grains of barbitol in that milk you drank. Sleeping powder? Hey, what's the matter with you breaking the glass like that? I don't want to go to sleep. I'm all right. Oh, you're all right. Can't even hold a glass. Well, you're in fine shape. And well, at least you drank the milk. I don't like taking dope. Now, look, son, it'll slow you down. You'll wake up feeling like a new man. <laughs> you little fellas, you don't know how to relax. It's a wonder you live as long as you do. Now, come along with me. You just lie there now. 
and behave yourself. That's right. Crawl under the blankets. Now, in a few minutes, you'll be sleeping like a baby. And you won't need the lights. Good night, young fellow. <laughs> Pleasant dreams. <laughs> For suspense, Autolite is bringing you Mr. John Lund in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hello, Hano. What's cooking? Don't say those words, Hap. They're mm. poison. Look at this letter. Mm. Oh, from a June bride. Dear Uncle Harlow, I'm just dying to learn how to use that lovely pressure cooker you sent me. Wasn't a pressure cooker. I sent her a dandy, dynamic, Autolite stay-full battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And she says, I know it must be a wonderful pressure cooker because the instructions say it needs water only three times a year in normal car use. June brides, they're dumb. She should know that an Autolite stay-full battery has extra plates for extra power, protected by fiberglass insulation, for stronger life and longer life than batteries without these features. And she says here, uh, Bob keeps telling me the pressure cooker is really an Autolite stay-full battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. <laughs> Uncle Harlow, you're wonderful. Now we can cook as we travel. June brides. Now, if they'd listen to me... Uh, can't. We're going to listen to suspense. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage... John Lund as Jonathan in Lunch Kit, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Sleeping powder. He put sleeping powder in the milk, and like an idiot, I drank it all down, every bit of it. And then, then I started to get drowsy. With a time bomb in my lunch kit set to go off in just a few hours, I started getting drowsy. No, no, I had to get up, to get out. I couldn't stay there, couldn't sleep through. Had to do something, something. My eyes are getting heavy, so heavy, I couldn't keep them open. Kind of pure nitro, and all the chemicals and inflammable stockpiles here. The place would go up like an ammunition dump. Had to get out. I couldn't, couldn't keep my eyes open. So easy, it's so easy. Let my eyes close. Go to sleep. No! No! I couldn't go to sleep. I couldn't. I couldn't. I crawl off the cot. Window in the room. I have to get through the window. Couldn't go through the doctor's office. Get out through the window. I started over. But then, then I, I had to stop. I had to sit down. So tired. So tired. So good to sit there. So good. Close. Yeah. What? What? What's that? The nitro! The whistle! The whistle! Time to go home. Six o'clock. I slept right through and then the whistle woke me up. It woke me up. Oh. Well, lucky. I'm lucky. Six o'clock. The lunch kit goes off at 6.30. Have to act fast. This time, no mistake. Now, now I have to do everything right. Getting out of the dispensary was easy. There was a shed right below the window. I dropped to the roof. And into the ground. Didn't feel any too good. Still groggy from the barbitol. There was no time to think about that now. When I got back to the locker room, the boys are climbing out of their work clothes, getting ready for the shower room. Hey, Jonathan, you okay now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel fine. Hey, you better stop drinking that turpentine, Jonathan. <laughs> Boy, you sure had me worry, Jonathan. Oh, I'm all right now, Mike. Do I still get the ride? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, see you later, then. Gonna take a shower. I changed into my street clothes and nothing flat, not caring how I looked. I was kind of worried the doctor would look in on me and find me gone. When I was ready to go, all the other fellows were in the shower room. Oh, that was the break I wanted. I took the one 
garbage can out of my locker and slid it underneath. Then I looked at my wristwatch. Four minutes after six. I had 25 minutes to get away. It was working out fine. Now I knew Father would be pleased. I walked past the front offices. No one else around yet. I couldn't walk too fast, though. Not too fast, not too slow. That natural. Not too fast, not too slow. Oh, uh, Jonathan. Huh? That was Mr. Davis, the foreman. How are you feeling now, Jonathan? Oh, I'm all right, Mr. Davis. Anyhow, I want to talk to you. Come into the office. Now? Sure, now. Well, I'm in kind of a hurry, Mr. Davis. At 6 o'clock in the morning, nobody's in a hurry. Come on, come in. All right, but just for a minute. Close the door. Sit down. Uh, nothing like sitting down and relaxing after a long night. This chair could use a little oil. I really can't stay long, Mr. Davis. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to meet someone. <laughs> At six o'clock in the morning? You still look pale, Jonathan. You sure you feel all right? Yes, yes. Mr. Davis, if it's about the mistake I made tonight... Oh, well... it's not that so much. I'm just a little worried about your health. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about, Mr. Davis. It's just that... Well, sometimes I get a little nervous. A little nervous? Look at you, squirming on that chair. You're a bundle of nerves. Something bothering you? I mean, something really bothering you? You can't relax. Nothing's bothering me. Well, just to make sure, I'm going to call the dispenser. I've got a hunch you're not telling me everything. I tell you, I'm all right. A uh, dispensary, please. Jonathan! Jonathan, come back here! Chasing me. I looked at my watch. 6.14. Still plenty of time to get away. I left the main building and started across the yard to the gate. It was still dark. I was one of the first out. Hey, you! Don't look back. Don't look back. Keep going. Don't let them stop you. Hey, slow down! Slow down! Oh, Bob, I gotta chase you. I'm all out of breath. What do you want? You know as well as I what I want. You forgot something. What did I forget? You forgot to punch the time clock. I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow? That'll be my neck. You're not leaving this plant till you punch out, mister. All right, all right. I'll go back and punch out. Where's the fire? Where's the fire? You ought to work out that energy at your job, young fella. Yeah, yeah. I went back into the main building. And there was at least 20 other guys waiting in line before the clock. Say, hey, hey, look. I, uh, I got to get to town early. How about letting me punch out now, huh? End of the line, bud. But it'll only take a second. End of the line. We all want to get to town early, bud. Okay, okay. I still had time, still had time, still had time. Hi there, Jonathan. Hello. Say, I think Mike's looking for you. Yeah? yeah the old guy sort of adopted you, ain't he? Yeah. <laughs> sure a good long line tonight, eh? Yeah. Well, not so much to do at 6 o'clock in the morning. My missus will be asleep when I get home. Oh. How are you feeling now? Huh? Oh, okay. Say, is my watch right? I got 621. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, 620 I got. <laughs> you sure figure it out to the minute. Right to the minute. Here's my card. Okay. <laughs> Finally, I got to the parking lot. A whole flock of guys were out by now. It was kind of cold. It took a couple of seconds for the motor to turn over. It was 6.27. I had three minutes. Three minutes. Couldn't waste any time. I was fighting for my life. Finally caught. Started backing out quick. I had to get out of here in a hurry. Three minutes. Less than that now. Oh! Hey! Hey, look out! Oh, my headlights. What's the matter with you? Come out and see what you did to my headlights. I'm sorry, I'll pay for them. Oh, that ain't the idea. Why don't you watch where you're going? All right, here's my driver's license. Uh, I work in Unit 5. I'll see you tonight and we'll, we'll work something out. My name is Jonathan Peters. Hey, hey, not so fast, not so fast. I gotta write this down. You got a pencil? Here's my pen. Well, start writing. All right. Jonathan Peters. Unit 5, Yes! Huh? Okay, here's your pen. I'll see you tonight. You ought to watch where you're going this time in the morning. Back up and let me out, will you, fella? I'm in a hurry. Oh, you guys, always in a hurry, always in a hurry. That's how trouble starts. All right, 
It's clear now. Thanks. No more than two minutes. I gotta hurry, hurry. Clear now. All clear. Hurry, hurry. Hey, Jonathan, wait for me. Wait, wait, Jonathan. Oh, he got away. Now, why'd he do that? These young fellas don't know what the end will be. Uh, that kid sure is wacky. In a hurry, always in a hurry. Hey, what's the matter with him? Uh, no sense of responsibility. Last night he drives like a turtle. This morning he races out of here like a demon and leaves me standing. Uh, too bad, Mike. Well, maybe somebody else will give you a ride home, huh? Oh, I can get a bus, but this will teach me to do a guy a favor. What do you mean? Well, that Jonathan. I didn't want to keep him waiting, so I came out and looked for him, and he's not in the car. So I go back in the plant to look, and I miss him. When I get back, he's driving off. Yeah? So what's the favor you did him? Well, he was so darn particular about it. Then he goes off and leaves it under his locker. But I found it and put it in his car for him. What? His lunch kit. I put it in his car. Hey, what was that? Funny. Sounded like thunder. Thunder? Look at the sky. Yeah, beautiful. No, it couldn't have been thunder. It's going to be a real nice day. Thank you, John Lund, for a splendid performance. So people see suspense on television, too, Harlow? Yes, Hap, and on television, too, they learned that an Autolite stay-full battery needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Just like they learned that Autolite stay-full batteries are made by Autolite, makers of more than 400 products for cars, trucks, airplanes, and boats in 28 Autolite plants from coast to coast. Yes, sir, and Autolite makes complete electrical systems for many makes of America's finest cars. Batteries, spark plugs, generators, starting motors, coils, and distributors. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly because they're a perfect team. The lifeline of your car. So, folks, don't accept electrical parts that are supposed to be as good. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, here again is John Lund. It's been a pleasure to be here tonight with Tony Leader and his great cast of actors. And as an old suspense fan, I'm looking forward, as I'm sure you all are, to next week, when radio's outstanding theater of thrills brings you Agnes Moorhead in The Trap, another gripping study in... Suspense! John Lund is currently being seen in the Paramount picture Bride of Vengeance. Tonight's suspense play was written by Larry Marcus with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Leith Stevens. The entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. In the coming weeks, suspense will present such stars as Ralph Edwards and Joseph Cotton. Make it a point to listen each Thursday to Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. And next Thursday, same time, hear Agnes Moorhead in The Trap. And buy Autolite Stay Full batteries, Autolite resistor spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Put more opportunity in your future. Invest in U.S. savings bonds. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>